Good evening and welcome to our second week of Advent preparation here in the SMA parish in Wilton. Last week we started our Advent journey, taking time, time to prepare, time to pray, time to reflect and time to be silent. Advent is about taking time. When we take time, we stop to take a breath. We stop to observe and to reflect. Reflect on what brings meaning and purpose to life and particularly to my life. We reflect on how can we bring purpose and meaning to life? What changes do we need to make right now to bring purpose and meaning to life? And when we have time to reflect and observe, then of course we can proceed. We proceed with practice, with patience and with perseverance. Practice perseverance and patience to bring those changes to life that help us to live life to the full and help others to live life to the full. This Advent, we are looking for treasure. We're looking for treasures as we did last Advent. We're looking for the treasures of faith, hope and love. The hidden treasures that lie deep within all of us. These are the foundational treasures, are the foundational principles of a Christian life. They're intertwined. Faith doesn't exist without hope. Hope doesn't exist without love. They are like three leaves on the one shamrock. We committed our first week of Advent to searching for and renewing our faith because it is the foundation. You might remember your homework. Not too late to do it yet. It's okay. Teacher isn't going to check. You can do it this week. Try to read or maybe to listen to the Word of God through reading scripture, or maybe listening to a YouTube clip. It's available in lots and lots of places. Devote some time to prayer. Remembering, of course, that prayer is a personal experience. It's a personal experience of just plain talking to God. Or maybe it could be the personal experience of saying the rosary. Or maybe it could be the personal experience of walking with the dog. It's a personal experience. All it requires is time and a little commitment. Acting out your faith by choosing to do something that is truly Christian. Undoing a wrong, forgiving somebody, a heart, solving a heart, giving something to charity acting on a random act of kindness. There were lots of things we can do to act out our faith. This week, I would like to invite you to search for the treasure of hope. Remembering, of course, that it is very closely linked to faith. Pope Benedict reminded us that it is the beautiful task of Advent to awaken in all of us the memories of goodness and thus to open the doors of hope. Awaken in all of us the memories of goodness and thus open the doors of hope. Advent is rooted in hope. The coming of Christ, a very hopeful experience. The Saviour who came to redeem us, giving us a very hopeful message. The past nine months have truly tested and tried our hope. 
May I ask you for a few moments to reflect on those months? Let's pretend we are back in Advent 2019. And when I spoke to you and I asked you to look and search for inner treasures hidden within yourself, just pretend I painted this picture for you. Maybe you would like just to close your eyes as I help you to reflect. It may, be the mo may not be the most pleasant reflection you've ever done. Just pretend last year I said to you, within three months you will be confined to your home. You will not be allowed to visit family, friends, and they will not be allowed to visit you. You will only be allowed to travel within two kilometers of your home, just for the purpose of exercise. All non-essential shops will be closed. Clothes, shoes, DIY, furniture, hardware, garden centers, you name it. They will all be closed. Food supplies and pharmacies will be the only retailers open. Hairdressers, barbers, beauticians and all such self-care outlets will be closed. You will not be able to go for a meal or a cup of coffee with family or friends. Unless you work your work is essential, is considered an essential service, you will be asked to stay at home. Unfortunately, if your work cannot be done from home, you will be unemployed. You will not be able to go to Mass or visit a church. They will also be closed. Funerals and weddings will be restricted to just a handful of people. If a loved one goes to hospital, visiting will only be allowed in exceptional circumstances. Unfortunately, a significant number of people will lose their lives during this period of time. If you have a loved one in a nursing home, you will only be able to see them through a window, if at all. Children will not be at school. The Leaving Cert will be cancelled. You will have to wear a mask at all times, particularly when you are shopping. You will not be able to engage in physical contact. Hugging or shaking hands and you will, not, you will need to maintain a distance of at least two metres from people. When and how we get back to life as we knew it is a little bit unpredictable. It may be six months, it may be 12 months, it may be longer. Get used to it, it's your new normal. Nothing could have prepared us for that. Nothing could have prepared us. The virtue of hope enables us to face the burdens of daily life, no matter how heavy. The past nine months have surely been a burden of enormous weight. But somehow, somehow, our faith and our hope has got us through. Hope is rooted in faith and love. We give hope and we combat fear as a Christian community through encouragement and through faith.
staying connected as families, communities and friends is really, really essential. Phone calls, Zoom, online. Connection requires planning. It requires effort and it requires going the extra mile. What efforts can we make during Advent to maintain the connection? Because connection is essential to hope. Show God's compassion and care to those affected in your community. Bring that hope to your home, bring it to your friends, bring it to your family. Stay connected. As a Christian community, we are called to be the voice of calm and reassurance that God is with us and he is blessing every effort we make, even during chaos. He blesses every effort we make during chaos. But if we are to endeavour to build calm and reassurance, we must learn to change some of our behaviours. We must learn to stop whining. Whining brings hope down. We must stop acting as victims. Acting as victims brings hope down. We must act by example and make lead by example. Lead by example. What can we do to get involved in the recovery plan? How can we go that extra mile in the recovery plan? Hope requires trust. Life is not predictable. We know that. It's not predictable. There are ups and downs along the way. Covid is just one of those downs. It's just one of those downs. Many of us want to trust in God. We really want to trust in God. Now, it's easier to trust when times are good. It doesn't require a whole pile of faith to trust when times are good. But when times are difficult, it is even more important because without that trust, Hope fades, hopelessness sets in, and fear takes over. Where there is hopelessness, where there is fear, the purpose and the meaning of life fades. There is no purpose and there is no meaning in hopelessness. How do I build my trust in God? How do I build my trust in God? That trust which ignites the hope even in the darkest hours of my life. Let's look at it. The Oxford Dictionary says to trust, to trust is to believe in reliability, in truth and in strength. So when we trust, we believe and we believe that there is reliability, there is truth, and there is strength. They're the three characteristics we can be certainly sure of in our God. Our God is reliable. Our God is truth. And our God is strength. Trusting in God is more than just a feeling. It is a choice to have faith in what he says, even when the feelings and the circumstances of our lives might tell us differently. Right now, the feelings and the circumstances of COVID might, might tell us differently. But our hope is built in our faith that our God is with us. All will be well. 
all will be well. And as we are reminded on many, many occasions, do not be afraid. This too shall pass. Feelings change. Circumstances change. God never changes. Trust is not about ignoring reality or pretending that everything is okay. That's just living in cloud cuckoo land. So how do I acquire this trust? What is it? What is it if I search for this hidden treasure within me? If you trust someone, you feel comfortable being honest with them. You feel comfortable being honest with them. Share your despair with God. He understands. Surrender, surrender your deepest, darkest feelings to him. As Fa Psalm 56 reminds us, you keep track of all my sorrows. Don't let your emotions rule your life. Share them with your God. A burden shared is a burden lightened. He never gets bored listening to your burdens. Human beings can get very bored listening to us. He never gets bored listening to us. Use him as your security to get you through. That is how you will build your hope. But to do so, remember, you must strengthen your faith in him. When Jesus felt overwhelmed himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, he shared his vulnerability with his father. He asked his father to lighten that burden. We too can ask him to lighten our burdens. Some suggestions you might like to practice the second week of Advent. Continue with your homework from week one, because it is crucial. Continue to read. Continue to listen to scripture as best you can. Continue putting time aside for your personal prayer. That's making that phone call, making the connection with your God in your personal way. There is no right, there is no wrong way. He understands your language. Continue to act out your faith, doing that random act of kindness, considering a charity you might support, mending a hurt. Continue acting out your faith. Acknowledge your unbelief. Trust is built on belief. But of course, we're human. Acknowledge your unbelief. We all from time to time need to put our fingers into the wound to believe. Just as Thomas did. Even though Thomas was face to face with his God, he still didn't believe. It's okay. Acknowledge your unbelief and ask for the strength to strengthen it. Share in community. Community builds trust. Community builds strength. And community builds hope. Share in community. You cannot do it alone. Look for things to be grateful for. We can always feel downtrodden. We can always feel victimised unless we find something to be grateful for. And we have many, many things to be grateful for. Many, many things to be grateful for. For those of you who have done the mindful classes, we talk about the pleasant events calendar. The little things of every day that make us grateful. Grateful for the sunshine. Grateful for the creation around us. Grateful for our family. 
grateful for our friends. There's lots of things. There are multitudes of things to be grateful for, even in the midst of a pandemic. A feeling of gratitude brings hope. Know that the Holy Spirit walks with you. How do I know the Holy Spirit walks with me? As I was reading the last, a description of the last nine months to you, what did it feel like? What did it actually feel like? It's a daunting story when you read back on it. And for many of us, we say, how did I get through that? How did I actually survive that? And we say that about many things in our lives. Some of the horrific experiences we might have had in our lives. We reflect afterwards and we say, how did I get through that? We got through it because we didn't walk alone. Spirit walked with us and carried us. So call on the Holy Spirit. He walks with you every day. He inspires you. He carries you. Walk with your spirit and know the spirit is with you. Learn to wait on the Lord. Learn to wait. This pandemic is not going to end overnight. Waiting takes patience. Waiting takes perseverance. So just learn to wait. And as you wait, know that God is waiting with you and he is in charge. He is in charge. Just learn to wait and be patient. This trust will build hope. Hope that we are going to achieve a goal. And if we believe in the goal, the journey is easier. And that's what we're going through right now. The restrictions, there's a goal in the restrictions. And that goal is worth waiting for at the end of the journey. It is the very same as the goal we are trying to achieve through our Advent preparation. What is our goal? Our goal is to build our faith, build our hope and build our love. And that goal is worth waiting for. So let me finish this evening with a prayer of hope. When evil darkens our world, Lord, give us light. When despair numbs our soul, Lord, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, Lord, lift us up. When nothing feels sure, Lord, give us trust. When ideals fade, Lord, give us vision. When we lose our way, Lord, be our guide. Be our guide that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. May your journey in faith, hope and love bring you to your God. So as we head into the second week of Advent, let's talk about the homework. You might choose to continue with your faith exercises. Praying, taking time to pray, taking time to get to know God, making that whole phone call again. And you might like this week to practice your exercises of hope. Acknowledge your unbelief. You're not a saint. Share in community. Community builds strength. Community builds hope. You can't do it alone. Be grateful. 
Find at least three things when you wake in the morning to be grateful for. And three things before you sleep at night to be grateful for. That's just six things a day and there are probably many more. Connect with spirit. You only realize what he gets you through when you've got there. Connect with spirit. He is by your side all of the time. Learn to wait. Learn to wait. And as I reminded you last week, please prepare to join with us on Christmas Eve and to the SMA community as we light our candle of faith and hope and love, which will take us into another year. Good night and God bless.